Hey fun fans, our featured FRC deep dive team is 1619 Upper Creek Robotics, and they've hooked us up with a sweet 1619 t-shirt. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments which 1619 video is your favorite. You can enter in any video that has this intro, so make sure you comment below. We'd also like to thank our sponsor of this show, Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their internships and careers. Visit striker.com forward slash first to view career openings tailored to those in first. That's S-T-R-Y-K-E-R.com forward slash first. Jay Poliri asks, how do you manage the first week of build season with 90 people, particularly with prototyping and making big design decisions? Great question. I can start with that one. Um, so we, um, our kickoff process is based off of a lot of um, groups, you know, splitting off in groups, talking about things, coming back together as a big group. Um, and then we kind of keep that going for the first week uh, with um, groups for proto prototyping different possible mechanisms. Um, and then, uh, you know, all the different things there. And then big design decisions tend to come down to a lot of um, talking on the first, last, first couple days. Um, with a small, slightly smaller subset of more experienced students and mentors. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we do it. We try to do our best to engage as many students as possible at the beginning, especially when you know falling back on experience isn't as big of an issue, right? You're doing a lot of brainstorming. Uh, everybody's kind of in the same boat as far as not really knowing what what's going on in the game, and then. Um, as you know, more and more technical decisions have to get made. We start paring down into you know slightly more experienced groups to make some of those tougher calls. Um, you know, we we really start fabricating parts kind of on days three and four, um, whether they're prototype parts or um, parts we know we're going to use, like our drivetrain sprockets or things like that. We can cat those up real quick and send them to the fabrication team. So a lot of students actually start getting busy with other tasks very quickly. Um, and so there's not really 90 students who are you know, sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Our software team's already working on you know, new software and stuff like that. So it's not like we have 90 people exclusively working on prototypes. Um, you know, we're able to you know, immediately kick people off on value added actions and, and utilize everybody, everybody's capabilities as much as we can. Nice. Uh, Doom. Fangergersis, I think. Sorry if I said it wrong. Uh, wanted to have some clarification on what the lily pads were for the UC Health thing that you guys talked about earlier. So maybe you can just quickly describe what the lily pads are. The lily pads are ivy pole stands for kids that are about like two to five years old and they sit on them. So when you're in the hospital, they can still have the IV attached to them and they, they're like parents or like the nurses can move them around the halls of the hospital. It just gives them a bit more mobility and it's kind of like a fun thing in the hospital. That's kind of ironic to say, but yeah. Cool. That's really cool. Uh, read between, oh shoot, Tyler's cursor is blocking my, I can't see what it says. There we go. Uh, read between uh, uh, TFM wants to ask, how many feet of snow are there in Colorado right now? I don't know, guys. Half a foot, maybe. Uh, we got dumped on pretty hard last night and today, so and it looks like it's still snowing. So we'll see what it ends up at. The perks of being in Colorado, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hunter Jake 88 asks, uh, your favorite team to work with. So maybe all three of you can just give us a quick uh, answer for who your favorite team to work with is. <laughs> That's a hard question. Yeah. Um, I've really enjoyed working with 1678 um, in the last, in two events in the last two years. Um, it's been a really amazing experience for me. Yeah, I was just about to say uh, 1678 is a great team. It's been great working with them. They're honestly great people. Cool. Yeah. I think uh, you know I enjoy working with all teams. Um, wow, what yeah. a what a politician over here! <laughs> Come on, we're, we ask the hard hitting questions here on Deep Dive. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna require you to answer the question, Clint. I, I had a lot of fun working with 148 in 2018 when they came to Colorado. Even though uh, you know the event didn't end up how we both wanted, it was it was a good time. They're a fun group of people, and uh, yeah. All right, well, shout out to 148 and 1678, both teams who have already been on uh, Deep Dive. So if you missed those episodes, check out our YouTube channel and you can uh, watch the videos from their interviews. 
Uh, just a shameless plug there. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, Shelby A asks, uh, "What type of vehicle do you use to get your trailer pit carts to events?" Uh, yeah, so we use a, a Ford F two fifty Super <laughs> Duty. Um, it's red. It has a, a trailer hitch on the back of it, and we uh, you know use that to drive to events. These are the these are the important questions we all need to answer. Right, right. There you go. All right, uh, Owen Coin asks what do you use for your driver console any specific type of laptop or computer what you know any specific controller etc yeah, so we changes around a little bit um but we're currently using I don't remember what uh, laptop it is but we use xbox controllers for our controller and we have a 15 inch uh, laptop i think it's an hp is it um yep. we're using as well as a secondary screen perfect uh, Dare uh, wants to know, what benefits have you seen with the awesome videos your team does, and what tips do you have for teams wanting to go into that as well? So we talked about it a little bit, but you know we didn't really talk about maybe what benefits you guys have seen from it. So um, Personally, the way that I see it is that Colorado is not necessarily like a very represented state in the first community, and I think our videos have really... Um, brought more light to Colorado and the great things that we're doing here um, within first, but also within the community. Um, and for tips, um, I'm not really sure for tips. Yeah, we're, uh, you're asking the wrong people. You definitely <laughs> need to reach out to uh, Jeremy Thomas um, if you have any uh, questions about videos or stuff like that. Well, and I think maybe just find find someone who's really passionate about it, right? Who just really wants to put that effort in is, is yeah. I think the biggest thing probably. That's absolutely the first step. You know, you won't you won't get great videos unless you have someone who really wants to do it. I, I'm just gonna step in real quick. Like, there's talent in this though too. It can't just be you want to do it. Like, this guy kicks a lot of well, ass. Well, yeah. Like, no, this, like this clearly is some this of the best stuff I've really ever good. seen. Like, first first should hire him. I'll just say it. Like, he's making videos. I mean, that are let's bring him on fun first, first and then first can poach him afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's fine. Yeah, uh, hit us up. Uh, we can make some awesome first updates now videos. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, our next question is uh, from Owen Coyne again. Asks, how many people do you have working on the CAD side of the robot? Uh, maybe students and mentors. And uh, and how many for the building? I'm assuming that's probably about the robot. Uh, so from the CAD side of things, we have two mentors that really deal heavily in the CAD, myself and, and John, our lead mentor. Um, Mike also helps occasionally. He's not necessarily a SolidWorks user, but um, has pretty good high-level design instincts. Um, then we have, depending on the year, um, anywhere from, I don't know, six to 10 students probably. Uh, we have 10 CAD stations, so we can't really support too many more students than that. But yeah, everybody has different levels of experience, so they're able to tackle different levels of projects. So this past year, for instance, we were pretty limited on CAD experience. And um, so it was a lot more kind of side by side, you know, working with students, you know, step by step to get things done. And, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to be about the same this year. But in the past, we've had students that can take on full drive trains, full elevators, full um, collectors all on their own. It's just a year to year thing that we'll switch up, you know, with depending on the students we have. Is uh, uh you, you talked about training earlier in the show. Is there anything you guys kind of do to to help with kind of CAD education for students in the off season at all to try to improve that at all? Yeah, we you know we've started developing kind of a curriculum um, across all of our sub teams, really focusing heavily on it the last probably two seasons. Um, you know we do we start you know with the basic SolidWorks tutorials to learn the tool and really where we you know where students a lot of times tend to run into issues is in the true design work, right? Learning SOLIDWORKS as a tool is truly not that difficult. There's tons of YouTube videos that teach you how to do it, but becoming good or great at uh, designing FRC robots is just something that takes a lot of experience. You look at somebody like, you know, Adam Hurd or the, you know, the 254, 118 guys. <laughs> Adam Hurd. Uh, you know, they, they have been doing it for a long time. And so that's something that students really don't get the opportunity to do so much. So we try to focus on giving them more opportunity through off-season projects uh, to work on honing their design skills. 
Yeah, I think I always tell people, you know, like kids will actually learn the, the program itself faster than like an adult will learn it, right? Like they're going to pick up SolidWorks quicker than an adult's going to pick it up actually just because they're faster at learning the technology. It's just learning like, you know, what what components to use in what situations and why and understanding all that. And yeah, I think you're right. It just comes with experience. So we're happy to talk about a new sponsor of fun uh, that I've been a fan of in Michigan for a while. We've been around them a bunch. So Tyler, why don't you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I can't wait to talk about a course if you're part of the couple thousand people that are in our Discord now. You should know uh, that we are beyond excited uh, to bring uh, on onto fun as fun is starting to grow and to help us accomplish our mission of uh, producing content that is loud, live, and independent. Our friends at Striker have stepped up to the plate, and well, guess what? Striker wants first alumni and mentors who are ready for a career with a cutting edge medical technology company who have a passion to enable and save lives. Uh, get this, not only does Striker pay top dollar for careers, I'm still waiting for my call, by the way, uh, they also pay great on internships and co-ops, but Striker recognizes the power of first mentors and volunteers and will actively support you in first. Now, I don't know about the, the few of you that are lucky, those who are have jobs right now, but really how many of you can say that your employer actively understands what you do in first? Because as much as I love where I work, uh, it, they don't truly right now. Trying to explain what we do and what fun is, uh, that's a hard thing to get. And Striker really does understand that. So give Striker a thought and check out uh, what they have in store. Go to S-T-R-Y-K-E-R.com uh, to find out more about Striker uh, and see if there's a high paying first supporting career internship or co-op for you that's s-t-r-y-k-e-r.com uh and thanks to striker by the way uh for helping uh keep fun a lot of live and independent uh guys you guys have been awesome stepping up with uh, donations and bits uh, and we're looking at getting to the next level we want to create more and more content for you and can't wait to do so so thanks a lot to striker for stepping up and helping uh let us do things like you know go to more competitions uh actually take a salary for once things like that would be nice and appreciated so thank you striker go check them out s-t-r-y-k-e-r.com uh, all right, our last question comes from Doomfangersers. Sorry, I don't know how to say it. Sure. Uh, how do you integrate newer students into the software team specifically? So this is something we're always working on getting better at. Um, this year, we're starting with, I've been putting together curriculum with some basics on Java and um, you know, GitHub and stuff. Um, but our main thing this year is our mock build season. So the software students have been working on setting up a full FRC environment on their laptops and all of the code required to run a basic robot. So I'm really hoping that will help them get uh, ready to help our, our code during build season. Awesome. All right, well, we have gotten to the point where it is time to do our drawing for our second giveaway of the night. That is for the awesome uh, 1619 hat. So the code for that was uh, big suck, one word, B I G S U C C. So get your last second entries in there. Make sure you're following the channel. And uh, and Tyler will go ahead and roll for the winner. So, yep. Tyler, and once who again, is our winner? Make sure you reach out to us either on our Discord uh, or, of uh, course, uh, here on chat. By the way, if you're not in our Discord yet, come join the over 2,000 people or about 2,000 people now in Discord. Talk more about fun, uh, what's going on fun, some of the events we have going on. Uh, and it's the best place for you to provide input on shows as well. So if you want to let us know how shows like this show and others are doing or want to hear about new shows, uh, that's the place to be. So make sure you check that out. Uh, the winner uh, is going to be uh, NLS GRN. Congratulations, man. Uh, who is a subscriber? You guys know what that means. Lots of rigged emotes in chat. We clearly rigged it for this person to win because they are a sub. Uh, congrats, man. Uh, yeah, we'll get in touch. Uh, no problem there. So congratulations on that. And thanks again to 1619 uh, for some sweet giveaways. And don't forget, if you're interested in winning that 1619 t-shirt, uh, is that available in multiple sizes, by the way, guys? Yeah, yeah. you just okay. let us know what size. We'll Perfect. Get uh, make sure you comment. Uh, there'll be a uh, spot on all uh, YouTube uh, videos for the next couple of weeks uh, where you can leave a comment on there. That will get you entered as long as you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is for free to do. Uh, so make sure you check that out for the 1619 t-shirt. All right. So before we finish up the show for the night, um, do you guys maybe have anything coming up that you'd like to promote real fast or any takeaways from this past season or things you're looking forward to for the 2020 season? Or maybe, you know, because of uh, recent events, maybe any personal memories you guys have of uh, Woody Flowers maybe would be a cool thing to do. 
Um, for things that we'd like to promote, I talked a little bit about this earlier, but we have the Where's Kindness project that we've been um, pushing a bit more. And we're looking to have more teams get involved. So we're not just handing out washers at Houston or handing out washers at the Colorado Regional. So we want to get more teams involved with that. So if teams are interested, like send us a DM or an email um, and we'll get you set up with that. We'd love to have you. Uh, All right. As far as uh, personal memories of Woody Flowers, I remember meeting Woody as a, a, a budding sophomore in high school. Uh, you know, you can't say enough about how genuine of a guy he was. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. It was my first year in FRC, uh, and he still came by, asked me, you know, that I was, if I was enjoying the program, you know, what I liked about it, what I disliked about it. And uh, I think that's been echoed over, you know, over and over again, especially as we hear about more stories over the past few years, just what a genuinely good guy he was. Yeah, I think you could always tell that he was always running late to wherever he had to go next. But, like, I always would notice if he was in the pits, like, if he saw, the, saw something he thought was cool on a robot, like, he would just, like, stop where he was going and he would just, like, want to go find out. And he would just, like, talk to you about, like, very technical things. And you'd be like, you know, it's Woody. Like, you'd think he would be you know, at high level stuff, but that he still just was just generally always curious about stuff like that. And I just thought that was, you know, a really cool thing that you don't always see from a lot of the high up people like that. So um, we'll definitely miss him. Uh, we did have one quick question from the chat. Uh, are 1619 shirts for sale at all? They are for sale. We have our store online. Um, Tyler could probably pull it up. It is store.team1619.org. And we have basically all of our merch on there. So if you didn't win something tonight, um, you can go buy some of our merch. It's pretty cool. Is the hat on there? Because the hat is on there. Yo, okay, <laughs> that's lit. The hat is really cool. So I'm jealous. All right. Um, well, that is uh, gonna do it for us tonight. Uh, we hope everyone out there enjoyed the new the show and uh, that you all learned a lot from it. I know I did, as always. Uh, and I want to give a massive thanks to our guests from 1619 tonight for volunteering to come on the show uh, and giving us all so much information about what, what makes them so amazing and for all the giveaways as well. So I hope you, had, I hope you guys had fun being on the show tonight. Yes, thanks yeah, for having us. All right. Uh, Tyler, real quick, is going to read off our latest supporters of the channel. So, Tyler, take it away. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, we got a lot of people who stepped up today, and we uh, definitely need it. So thank you so much to everybody uh, since our last stream. Uh, Llama guy 89 with the uh, Prime sub. Uh, Nathan with the uh, Tier 1 sub, 19-month support. Uh, hey, Nick, you stepped up with 19-month support. Thanks, buddy. Hell yeah. Uh, even Clint did, too, 28 months of support. So let's get the people on air. That works out great. Uh, Red Leader, 342, five months of support with the Tier 1 sub. Uh, wants to know how do I sub for multiple months at once? I don't know. Uh, Shelby A <laughs> comes in. There you go. Shelby A comes in with... Uh, 16, 19 bits. Holy crap. Thanks a lot, Shelby. Uh, you know, everybody should do that to support 16, 19 error fun. I mean, uh, thanks so much for that. Uh, Corey, uh, coming in, uh, from two, seven, six, seven with a tier one sub red leader, then, uh, takes a number one bit slot with a thousand bits there. Thanks a lot. Red leader, three, four, two, uh, Luigi two, nine, three, seven, one, eight months support. OMG robots, one, 23 months support, uh, Adam 1475 with some bits, chai T with some bits, uh, Monk Curry with the bits, uh, Owen, uh, Coyne with some more bits, Mike Stark with bits. Uh, and it kind of kept going back and forth there. Soaring Eagle uh, donating Dari with a tier one sub 11 months of support. Thank you so much. Uh, NLSGRN uh, won today and got a prime sub. That's how you do it, man. Vinny, the chin with the prime sub. Uh, and uh, that would be it. Lots of bits back and forth. Thank you, everybody, uh, for stepping up to keep fun, loud, live, and independent. Uh, just sincerely appreciate everybody uh, for your continued support even during the off season. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.